503, and I'd like to call the uh, Wednesday, March 27, 2024 meeting of the Capital Planning Committee to order. And the uh, first item of business is a uh, overview of funding sources for all the articles by our town treasurer, uh, Linda Sanderson. And uh, she will not only discuss the article on the water tanks, but all the other articles that we had already approved last week. So Linda, why don't you go ahead? You have the floor. Right. Well, well why, don't, why don't we start with an overview of um, what I have sent is a, a listing and um, you'll you'll get this, Randy, because I'll go it'll go to select board to um, a listing yeah. of the articles, uh, all the financial articles and their funding sources. So the the committee has already voted on the uh, moving 150,000 to the water plant filtration stabilization fund. They already voted that last time you voted on the fire department ladder truck for $2 million, which will be a debt exclusion borrowing. You voted on the drinking water asset management plant uh, plan, which uh, is a $155,000 article. 31,000 to come out of water reserves, 31,000 to be the town's in-kind uh, provision of uh, services or labor or supplies, whatever, in-kind. And um, we are expecting a $93,000 grant, which is, um, you, you've received notice, Carolyn. Yes. Yeah, so that's, that's good. We did that. And, then the last one we voted on was the million dollar uh, East Street project. Uh, the grant was to be $750,000 and we would borrow $250,000 that we have to vote on the entire million. So what is remaining in our capital items um, are uh, two that Randy as a select board member is quite familiar with. One, one is going to be um, we've got one as property. We're not going to be able to discuss that tonight. This is article, oops, not, must not be article 15. I think I have a mistake there. Um, but the select board need to vote on that in open session next week. It is article 15. Okay. Um, I guess that's right. Oh, I, no, that looks good. Anyhow, um, the, Select board will vote on that next week. So the, the capital planning will have to have one more meeting, Paul, than to uh, to discuss the, the, the price, uh, uh, discuss the oh. property. Uh, this is for the DPW building, next to the right. DPW building. So best to hold a discussion until, cap, uh, until the select board are done with this issue. So um, we'll have to pick up one of those um, tentative meeting dates that we discussed last time. And after April 3rd. So they'd be making a decision as to whether or not they want to purchase this property? Yes. So they have, but we, um, it is good. They, it was discussed at executive session. It needs to go to open session before the capital or the finance committee can discuss it. It's moving forward, but I can't go into details until it's voted on at open session. Okay. They already. Prepared. They already had, did you say they already had their executive session on it? Or? Yes. All right. Yep, so we'll, we'll, they'll vote next Wednesday. And then, uh, so that's why Linda's saying it has to be after April 3rd that the Capitol meets. And okay, Monday. all right. Yeah. Okay, that brings us to the last capital item, which is the water tanks. And uh, we have a, we had a lot of unknowns before and we still have a lot of them are unknown, but we're nailing them down uh, with our best guesses. Um, uh, Dan Zadonik, Carolyn uh, Sublowatsky and I have sort of put our heads together and uh, come up with a plan, which we did present to select board at their last meeting, if you, um, and they voted to approve this, which really help, helps you to uh, know where they stand on it. Um, what we have is this is a $9 million project and we need to vote, I guess, on $9 million. If we get a grant, and it's an unknown amount of the grant, but we made a good guess at um, 30%, which is $2.7 million. Could be more, 
could be less, but we had to we had to uh, sort of put the stake in the ground and say we've got to we've got to have some numbers here, which would leave us to borrowing six point three million dollars, and that would be um, so. What um, what we came up with for a borrowing term, and you're right, Paul, we can go up to forty, but the amount of interest uh, that we would be paying in that in extending it out ten more years. And knowing that we are going to have other projects coming in the pipeline just did not seem worthwhile. We made a decision, let's recommend 30 years. And the borrowing rate um, could be a little less, but we used 4% as the borrowing rate. So um, then the remaining variable is how much are we charging to, to taxation and how much to water rates? And uh, going to the current debt schedule, it works out actually kind of um, kind of well because we are finishing up um, the Callahan Wells payments. We are currently paying through 27. So this is this is 20 FY 24, 25, 26. In three more years we have to pay down the Callahan Wells. The Callahan Wells were funded by the town uh, with borrowing. Half of it was paid out of water rates and half of it was paid out of debt exclusion. The total that we're paying on the Callahan Wells is $330,000. So that's $165,000 to each source. So um, the amount, if we do a, a, the $6.3 million borrowing for 30 years at 4%, that comes out to $365,000. So we're 35,000 more in debt payments than we are paying right now on the Callahan Wells. Given the timing of the project and uh, the borrowing and when the first payment is due, it looks like it, it wouldn't come, the first payment wouldn't come due anytime before FY27. So we would have at most one uh, single year of overlap of paying the Callahan Wells and uh, for the uh, new water tanks. So the idea is we have, there is money in water reserves. There will need to be a water rate increase to cover uh, the additional amount because as, as I said, it's gonna be more. Um, so the idea is that we do um, the 165,000 that is to taxation, we will leave on taxation. The water will um, trade off the 165,000 and it will continue with 165,000 towards the tank tanks um, that it had on the wells, plus the additional 35,000 will also go to water rates. Um, the first year, it would all go to water rates using the increase and using the water rates, uh, the water reserves. So the first year of payments would come completely from water rates and reserves. And then second year on, it would be divided between debt exclusion and water rates, very similar to the way the Callahan wells have been funded. So, so after that uh, first, I'm sorry, Linda, I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah. No, no. After that first year, where there's the overlap, we're talking $35,000 additional on water rates. Right. Which sounds pretty reasonable. Um, so back up to that year that there is the overlap, will that money come from a like a one year increase in water rates or will it be taken out of water reserves in, in order to keep the rates more stable? The water rates would be increased by about 10% beginning for the year 27 it won't fully cover the whole amount of the payment, which we're estimating at $365,000. What it comes short will be made up out of water reserves. At this point, we have um, water reserves will still be, we have, we'll have seven, we, right now after town meeting and funding the budget, it will be $775,000 in water reserves. Remember, there already is um, an operational cost water increase taking effect, which will keep us from having to use as much reserves for the budgets 
as we have been. So the money will be more available to capital uses, which is what it's really for. Um, and we will be able to get through that first year. Is that an increase that you're talking about in addition to the 10% that's coming down yes. the road? Yeah. Yes. And we how started much is that with, estimated uh, at? So is it 6% or the 6, 7? It's 6. Uh, Susan's on. Okay. It's 6. That's, and that's taken effect in July? Yes, it is. And then the 10% will, uh, on top of that, uh, for the next uh, three years, and the ten percent should generate somewhere around one hundred and ten thousand a year. So we're not going to be taking a ton from the reserves when we actually have to make that first year payment. Okay, so that would be coming out of the like. Would you be reserving the ten percent for three years? Then. I don't know if I'm making any sense, but you mean segregating it so that it's not, or, or not even even if it's not really segregated, it'll go into just, my understanding. It'll go into um, uh, the the surplus, the uh, reserve account. So, so that year of the overlap will have most of the debt service coming out of reserves and not out of uh, the operational portion of the budget. Probably less than half of it because the reserves, mm, I don't know how much it is. So maybe um, not the full amount because you'll have, you'll be in your third year of the operational increase and the 10%. Right. Mm. However, any additional goes into the reserve account at right. the end of the year. So, yeah. And it so will build up again. We're saying it'll build up again, Paul. So you have ten percent for three years, and wouldn't that be enough to service that overlap year? I guess that's what I'm concerned is that one overlap year. You don't. I'd hate to see a one year jump in water rates and then they go back down again. It'll be close, Paul. It it, it should be a, somewhere around three hundred and thirty. So we will probably have to take another thirty five thousand if all of our variables are correct. We probably have to take an additional thirty-five thousand out of reserve to pay that first year. All okay. from water. All from water. Which is not, you know, that's not off the charts. You know, thirty-five thousand doesn't seem that high. It's not. And how about like uh, I know Scott, you're with us too, right? And how about I see Scott's name on, but I can't see his face. Mm -hmm. I'm he's, yeah, he's, he's in there. now. Yeah. Okay, you're going to go up uh, on these rates, but then your operating expenses are going to go up in the next three years also. So would that limit that 10% that we're quote unquote putting away for debt service if it's going to get eaten up by a higher operational cost? Or has that already been worked into the first increase that we're going to get right now or in July? In July? So uh, Sue has a lot more detail on this than me, but the board voted uh, a rate for the next three years uh, to go up on op for operating expense reasons. So this would be in addition to, but obviously if our operating cost goes up more or what have you, that's just unfortunately the way the enterprise works. We have to adjust the rates accordingly. Right. So in theory, if that does happen, we're going to have to use more, either increase rates even more than 10% down the road or use more out of reserves. Does that make Correct. any? Okay. Okay. I think, yeah. No, no, but the select board did last year was they voted a 12% increase for this year and six and six for the two subsequent years for operational, to take into account operational expenses, the way that the expenditures were trending. Um, I, I mean, it, you know, it's always kind of a crapshoot with water because if it's a rainy season, we don't have as much revenues. Uh, you, mm -hmm. uh, well, you know this, Paul, you, <laughs> you did yeah. this a long oh, yeah. time. So. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, 
Okay. So, just... Paul, 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 can I just give you some input as well? Um, I think uh, it's important to remember. Sorry about the noise. It's Randy. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's important to know that two of the grants we got, the asset management grant for water and wastewater, is going to include a rate study. So that's going to bring all of these projects into play, as well as operations. So that's going to be a critical data that we're going to use moving forward. So okay. we're going to be guessing. And another question I have is, I, I see you calculated the grant on the big on this project at thirty percent. Is that typical or representative of what USDA usually hands out for a percentage, or is that all over the place? And you know, how was that thirty percent arrived at? Uh, that was a number that our consulting engineer gave us that they feel was relatively uh, a standard. Great. Well, that's that's a much higher figure than when I was in the business. They were, you know, pretty skimpy with their grants. So it's encouraging to see a thirty percent grant on a project like this, especially you know you're looking at nine million in total. And, and Scott, kind of sort of off. How old are both of the tanks? Uh Mount Warner is older than Hoyoke, and I don't have that exact data in front of me, Paul, but I believe they're from one's late 50s, the other one was in the 60s. I don't, don't hold me to that information. I don't, I'm not out okay. of the office sure. with it. But sure. yeah, uh, Hoyoke is a little newer, but it still is in need of repair and brought up to uh, standard. So uh, they're, they're, they're not very far apart. And so I'm just going to throw this out anyway, not that I'm advocating for this or anything, but would it have made any sense to space these out, you know, like do one now and one later on, or that's, it, you know, why do it or why not do it that way? Oh, uh, there is a little bit, uh, and, I'll, and I'll say that again, a little bit of savings doing it uh you know one after the other uh for mobilization reasons of the company's equipment etc cetera, etc cetera, where you know they're they're coming from out of state here so they can do one and then move their equipment across town and do the other one instead of like coming back in a year or two and you're, you're moving equipment from god only knows where here and you know the logistics of the things that's where kind of the savings come in, comes into play okay and like i said i'm not advocating <laughs> taking that route i'm just thinking if from a financial standpoint if there was a lot more life left into in one of those tanks would it be so, worth you know putting it off just to keep the financial impact a little more spread out so re years? regardless paul if you do one or two or none or whatever we have to uh, do a rehab on them. That's the other point part of where we, you know, the board uh, agreed to do a replacement than a rehab because like we talked last time, a rehab is, you know, $3 million. We can get new tanks for nine and just, they thought, didn't think it was good uh, spending. So if you did one new tank, we still would have to rehab the other one for uh, whatever kind of money, a million you know, million and a half dollars of repair. So you're still looking at big money uh, either way. Right. And how much would it cost down the road too, if we wait? Well, that's another contributing factor to the price of things just, you know, goes up and up and up. Contractors barely hold a price for 30 days, never mind, you know, a year or two down the road. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. I think... Uh... I don't have any more questions. It's it's really good to hear though that it looks that thirty percent sounds, you know, relatively uh, not that it's guaranteed, but there's a good shot of getting the thirty percent is what I'm hearing the three of you say. Does anyone else, any other committee members, have any comments or any other questions, Bill or Randy? No, thank I you. I heard it all already, Paul. So I'm all set. Okay, uh, and hearing none, I would uh, 
ask for a motion to approve this uh, request for the water tanks for nine million. What was that? So moved. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I will make a roll call vote. Randy Iser? Yes. Bill Bannock? Yes. Paul McCretzky? Yes. The motion is passed. Okay. That was our sole item for the agenda today. However, as was mentioned, we're gonna to have to schedule a meeting. So why don't we uh, think about doing that now while we have at least three of us here and Linda and Dan right. and Sue and Carol. We had, uh, you had a couple of tentative meetings, I think on the second and the ninth. The second won't work because the select board won't have met yet. But how is April 9th, Tuesday, April 9th at five o'clock? Um, it should be, I'm going to be out in New York, but I'm coming back that day. I should be back. If you're talking five o'clock, Linda. Yes. Or, or we could do uh, the Wednesday. Hmm. Did you know? No. Wednesday wouldn't work for me either. We got, we have an MCTA <laughs> meeting. Yeah. The ninth won't work, right? You said? Yeah, I can't do the ninth. Okay. The ninth won't work for me. I'm sorry. Oh. What about the eleventh before finance? Are the what day of the selectman meeting on the third? Uh, third finance, okay. finance is going over the articles on the eleventh of April. I believe. At what time? Six. Six. Okay, and then this will be the only article we're discussing, correct? Correct. Well, if the rest of you are game, I'd be willing to do it. What time? Five o'clock. A date? I'm sorry, the date? Oh, the 11th. The 11th. Thursday, April 11th. Like the Yeah, that, that's it's fine. Oh, that'd be fine. Yep. And Linda, Dan, Sue. The station alert has arrived. Yep, that works for me. And I couldn't hear what, and Randy said it's okay too? I'm, I, it should be fine with me. Well, then let's uh, set that and Okay. He'll, he'll take care of uh, having Jen post it then, Carolyn? Yes. Excellent. Okay, so we're going to meet again on Thursday, April 11th at 5. And uh, is there any other business to come before the committee? Hearing none, I'll call for a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we'll go for a roll call vote. Randy Iser? Yes. Bill Bannock? Yes. Paul McCretzky? Yes. The meeting is adjourned at 5.27 p.m.